After finding a temporary solution to keep the Windjammer extension in place, Royal Caribbean International's Sovereign of the Seas is on its way to Freeport on Grand Bahama Island. The dry dock project is well underway. The ship will be taken out of the water soon after it reaches Freeport, where the bulk of the work will occur. The project team has only 18 days left to finish the revitalization before passengers come back on board. As we approach the dry dock period, the biggest goals are really preparing people for what is to come and preparing the ship so that it, it, it's ready to take on all these people that are coming on board. Um, we'd normally be boarding two and a half thousand guests on a, on a turnaround. This time we're boarding over a thousand contractors. So it's really, as we go in, it's the preparation of the ship physically and of the people mentally for, for what's to come. <laughs> Everyone's worked really, really, really hard, and um, it's definitely paying off. Well, a very good afternoon, Sovereign of the Seas, and welcome to your home for the next three weeks. Yes, it's lovely downtown Freeport, Bahamas. Having now arrived in Freeport, we're going to be here for the next two weeks, so it's important that the momentum of the last three days that we've had in Port Everglades uh, is maintained and we keep that up. When we pulled into the dock in the Bahamas, I had heart failure. My crane wasn't in place. And I was very disappointed because the yard had promised that all my cranes would be up and operational. It was a mechanical failure with that crane that happened in the second hurricane on the island. And the shipyard had to get the parts here. They were coming from overseas, and it took time for them to get here. And the ship came in, and the parts weren't here in time to put it up. Where is he going with the crane now? Craneage is real important to us in this project. We have to service the ship, and the ship is like a 15-story building. It's very high, so we need to use cranes to get material around to where we need to get it to. I'm supposed to have 22 containers coming this morning, but we can't keep going through this, this whole project. We'll never get the work done. I mean, this is working way too slow. You know, it's hurt us. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those days. It's just going to take more time to get up and running to the speed in which we need to be running. But that's not going to be until tomorrow. It's going to be tough. It's moving as slow as a turtle right now. We're adding 23 more staterooms to uh, an area that used to be two cinemas. Our biggest task uh, of today is to get the staterooms into uh, deck two through the hole in the side. We did something that we've never done before. What we decided to do for the speed was to build the cabins outside the ship. And once we got to Freeport, uh, knock a big hole in the side and literally uh, shove them inside. A little bit nervous. If the hole isn't big enough, they won't go in. The stateroom behind me will be uh, picked up by the crane. Uh, it will then swing around and drop it on the platform. The platform is on a forklift, and the forklift will take it down to the ship. Uh, it'll lift it up level to the side of the ship where we put in the big hole and then we'll, uh, we'll just push it in. So this is a finished uh, finished cabin unit. You can see the um, everything's there and I think we're ready to go. Uh, Christian really wants to do well. He wants this to be a success. He has been given a lot of responsibility. I'm hoping that I don't drop the ball on anything, but you know, it could happen. One of you guys need to run up to your crew and get some tools so we get this stuff off here. Everybody's standing around. There's four of you guys here. Every spare minute on a project like this has to be utilized. Literally not a moment to spare. There's four of their guys standing there. Go get some tools and move. Christian follows the plan. The plan is all about time. There's four of their guys standing here. Go to the ship and get some tools. Come on, guys. All right, you ready? All right, let's go. I just couldn't handle it. Nothing's happening, nobody's doing anything. Christian, Christian. Yeah, I was hammering, trying to knock the thing loose. And it was nice, because it helped me relieve the stress that I was feeling right then. There was a small Christian moment in his in his frustration that he, um, he, he had to vent off some steam. I don't know what Kevin and, and Amanda and these people have started calling the Christian moments, but I guess they're moments where I get into it. I really try to fix it or, or get involved when I should just step back. The Windjammer is clearly the biggest project we've got in the whole revitalization. It involves new structure, uh, which is aluminum, a lot of outfit and so on. Our structure is not fitting correctly. This one's deeper, low. so it should come down below. And we've been trying to figure out what the reason is. The key positions are the pillars. The, the pillars are going to uh, line up with the ship structure as far as girders and beams. 
there's a bit of the existing ship that's got to be cut. Uh, it's got to come down, you know, still a few inches. You're standing on the deck as we are now for the drainage when the water comes supposed to drain off to the sides like a roof that leans on the sides. Uh, we have made our structure according to the drawing was with a four inch lowered camber and on the ship it was eight inch so when we put it on it didn't fit because the drawing was wrong. Uh, starboard side forward is, um, is high. So we're pushing the structure down. You know it is stressful. That's taken a while, but we've got to get the positioning right because you can only weld it in place once. We don't want to have to move it again. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah, it was pretty good. My name is John Sherwood. I'm a safety officer on board Sovereign the Seas. I've been with the company for 12 years now, Royal Caribbean. Prior to that, I was 27 years in the Royal Navy. My chief responsibility is um, basic safety training for the whole crew. There's always a danger of fire in dry dock. This has been quite intense because of the total revitalization of the ship, so it takes extra precautions. That's one of the reasons why we had the rapid response firefighting team. Your job is purely firefighting for the whole dry dock, nothing else. A ship in dry dock is a, is a very vulnerable place to be. I've been in dry docks where I've seen ships gutted within five, ten minutes. Now, these are powerful nozzles. They're not like a standard ship's nozzle. They're very powerful. You can see what's happening here. OK, we're getting current of water it's protecting you. All right, shut it off. This water droplet is going into the heat, up the ceiling, immediately becoming steam. A lot of crew that come into our company is first time on a ship. It's a very big, steep learning curve for them. They'll get trained. They'll get shown pictures from my gallery, all the nasty ones. They get shown the dead bodies as well, which is a sobering thought. It's a big wake-up call. Make sure you give the nozzles a wash through with fresh water. The volume of hot work that's going on requires that we have better response so we're able to deal with anything that could happen. Hot work on a ship is anywhere where you carry out a process where heat will result from the actions that you take. Welding generates a lot of heat. You're actually fusing and melting steel together. So that actually has a very, very high temperature. The grinding sends uh, hot sparks traveling great distances. So obviously if you've got combustible materials lying around, a spark can get in there and cause ignition. We work very hard to make sure the areas are clean and there's no debris on the floors. Hey, Sean, when are we going to get air in here? It's going to be a while. Figure never. I'm not saying never. <laughs> We're working on it. What's the big deal? Is it you that's complaining about this little bit of carpet? No, because it doesn't really matter for us in which time. He just told me that he didn't care if we got the carpet out today or not. Will you clear that up with him? We'll remove it now. But in the future, when you want something from the ship, please speak with one voice. I understand. Thank you. Yep. They hate it when they whine. I especially hate it when they whine to the hotel director. That's what I really hate. <laughs> I don't think it's tall enough the hole to get it in the door. The bracket isn't big enough, and the hole isn't big enough. Maybe I'm stupid, but... When they were lifting the cabin up and they were going to slide it in, I was really nervous that it wasn't going to fit. It's kind of my responsibility to double check that all the, the sizes are right and everything's correct. I realized that I had the opportunity to make sure that it would have fit, and I didn't take it and I didn't do that. So. Not only was I angry at them, I was angry at myself that I hadn't, I hadn't taken advantage of that and, and done the right thing. There was this, this moment where I'm thinking, we're probably going to have to pull this cabin away and, and, and cut the hole bigger. First big jobs for the project team is getting 23 new passenger cabins through a hole in the side of the ship. But there's concern that the opening isn't big enough. If we get a forklift and bump it on this side just a little bit, that much, it should allow it to come down. We're getting 
getting there. It's getting there. The first one's always slow. It's like the first ship in a series. It's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. I was really relieved when that cabin went in. It was kind of a wake-up call. I realized I don't really know what everything's going on. I've been taking too much for granted. So I've been really trying to go around today and double check stuff like that. So I was really relieved. And then I also was like, okay, let's go do your job now. Well, that's the first one. It's only taken four and a half hours. All the hot work that's been going on, all the, the cutting and burning and welding and everything, that's all been my responsibility. Also takes a lot of manpower to make it safe. So we have somewhere in the region of 150 to 200 extra crew to do what we call fire watch, which is welding sentries to make sure that when these people are carrying out the work they're doing, they don't actually set fire to the ship. Right, what we've got here now is penetrations from deck zero up through here to take the pipe work through for this cabin. There's actually crew cabins down below which have been stripped out because of the hot work. The fire watch up the top here, keep an eye on him to make sure he doesn't ignite anything. My name's Paul Smith, inventory manager, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. Basically my job function on a normal in-service vessel is provisioning up the ship taking account of all of the food, the beverage, the consumables that come on that we need, getting stuff on and getting stuff off in conjunction with George. But in the middle, I've got to account for it all and ensure that the furniture, fittings, equipment get to the right place at the right time for the right people. Today is pretty much uh, keeping the decks clear of all the garbage and that and loading product on for the contractors. You know, trying to clear the ship, keep the risk of fire right down. Safety is the number one priority. That's why we've got to keep such a vigil eye out for piles of garbage and that on the ship that have been left around. When they start unbuttoning these um, packing crates, instead of leaving them in a pile, it's so easy to walk it down and chuck it in a dumpster. All it takes is a stray spark or somebody smoking in an area where they're not meant to be smoking and we could have a huge fire. Get rid of the pallets. Some of these guys have got the brain power of a dead end. You get something like this and there's openings in the hull and everything, the oxygen, a fire through here, it just feed off that and away we'd go. And we don't want that. Removing garbage keeps that risk down. How we doing, guys? Everything cool? What do you mean, bad? Not bad. Think cool, how in, man? That's it. A little bit more. A little bit more. No worries. This is really an art piece. It's a clock that was designed by a British uh, sculptor and clockmaker 15 years ago when the ship was uh, built. It's an amazing piece of engineering, and uh, unfortunately, after the years, it has stopped working. Can I have a screwdriver? I don't see why is that stuck. How about if we try to lift it and just see what happens? Don't, just don't break it. Wow. <laughs> Look. Let's see the locks. How this thing works. I think we can fix it. We cut this. I really have a plan to make it work. Modifying a little the, the engineering of it. The clock is not really a timepiece as much as a, as a work of art, but no one's ever seen it work. If it's not running by the time we lay carpet in that area, it's going out. Twice a day, every day, we have a meeting with all the contractors and the senior uh, people within the project team to go through lots and lots of different issues. We always start with safety. We have to make sure that everything we do keeps the ship uh, and all the people in it safe. Uh... Safety. We've had a lot of jobs stopped today because the preparation was not complete or work had started without a fire watch or the work was being carried out in a dangerous manner, particularly the balconies project. We've got hot work all through deck 10 and it goes outside over the winch deck and onto deck 7. There are people working down there, there are trash containers down there, there is a lot of combustible materials down there. Please ensure the area is safe below before you start cutting. 
I hope it will improve, because if it doesn't, you are going to cause a fire. OK, next meeting, 8 o'clock tomorrow. We'll see you all uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Thank you. By way of explanation, I got caught in a contractor crossfire today. OK. Is it copy cold? Oh, yeah, we did it. But I told the guy that, you know, in the future, if he reports to him and he, you know, that they need to speak There's a lot to me of that going on. So one good. voice, yeah. because okay. I just don't, I don't want to be wrong with you. Oh, no, okay. All right. OK. Just fix some dust in my politics. <laughs> We're going to move to the dry dock tonight. The ship will have to untie and move into the, the dry dock. They are moving all the big, large timber blocks that the ship sits upon. We must make sure we get things lined up properly in there. That's probably going to take till um, 9, 10 o'clock tonight. We'll sail the ship round and then pump all the water out of the dock. And as it lifts up, it will pick up the ship. Third year, more or less, we take her in and do all the work we have to do. We can pull the props and the propellers and the shafts and do all kind of technical work. It's amazing, isn't it? my favorite, I love her. What? Yeah. I've known sailors, been on ships for 30 years and never seen her like this. Oh my God. The Sovereign of the Seas is in dry dock in the Bahamas, where the entire 73,000-ton ship is on blocks, out of the water. As the rudders can be turned almost 90 degrees angle in relation to the big mother blade. She's 880 feet long and 106 feet wide and 156 feet tall and her tonnage is 73,192 tons. Is this typical build-up in the three years since we've had her blasted? It's not supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be like this. Yeah. Here is the center block. Snow is standing exactly underneath the ship in the center line. Yeah. Both sides exactly wow. underneath her. This is the center spot of the ship exactly. Here, will we put our name on it? In 1988, this was the largest afloat. Yeah. We have done 1,243 cruises with her, almost 2 million people. Yeah. 1,986,714 guests. I just had a moment of truth here, you know. This ship has brought me so much laughter, tears, and joy, you know, it's unbelievable. People ask me where I live, I say I live on the suburbs. Ship is meant to be out there in the water. I know she's high and dry. She's not meant to be like this. The main thing we want to get done today is to try and get all the uh, staterooms, the cabins, down on deck two, put in the side of the ship. The frustration we've got is whether we can get the shipyard to uh, work at the speed that we're used to. That speed for us is very important, so we've got we to try and push them along in that. This thing is really slow. Got to be faster. Faster. Where's my truck? I don't care about the straps. I want my cabins. The crane's in the wrong place, your crane breaks down, the truck breaks down. There's nothing I can do. I mean, I've been yelling at the guys, and I've been jumping up and down, but they don't care. It's, you know... Get it in! Get it in! Christian's wrestling with frustration, frustration, and frustration. He likes to get things done, and it hasn't quite moved as fast as uh, he would like. The riggers from the yard are from Romania, and some don't speak very much English. So it's hard for him to uh, to make himself understood. The cabin guys who were doing the cranes here are total screw-ups. They couldn't figure out how to hook it up, so they brought it up, and then they realized the crane didn't fit, so they brought it down. And they tried to bring it up with another crane and realized they didn't have the right stuff, so they brought it down. And then he almost tipped the crane over. Can you make sure they get the lifting boom on the right way around this time? My money's on you getting it right. I'm 
very energetic. This is my first project. I'm really into it. I really want to make it succeed. I really want to be a part of it in every way. And so I guess sometimes I get overexcited or over emotional or I don't have a lot of patience for lack of effort and, and not trying to get the problem fixed. I realize they don't really know what to do. I was screaming trying to get them to move and do something, but just trying to keep my cool, but it's just like they don't care. When I see people not reacting, it just I want to just kick them in the ass and say, let's go. Okay, we'll start this morning with uh, safety. Hot work was going on without sentry guards. This has to stop immediately. That must be 110% clear. Okay. Captain. The moment we are in with this ship now is the most dangerous part, you know. We have so many things going on at the same time. And there is certain things that we have to be 100% compliance, and that is the hot work procedures. A fire will, of course, start the very moment we do not have the fire guards and we are not in compliance. And it's going to set us back days, weeks, whatever, if we do have a fire, and not to mention human life, and we have to be in compliance here. With that it said, there is going to be a line drawn here now, and the line is drawn today. I will not hesitate for a single second to send people off the ship if we are not in compliance. Safety is our priority, regardless of the outcome here. Safety, safety, safety. OK, uh, business for the day. Uh... You know, um, I just want to remark that. Uh, this is a message to the quick response team. Go to deck 10 of fire. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Deck 10 of bravo, bravo, bravo. It's a code that's used so it doesn't disturb guests in a normal running routine. It's always a little scary when you get that call because you don't know what you're going to be faced when you get there. The first thing to do is, is ascertain the, the level of risk and identify the, the source. Uh, one of the things we do, obviously, is we take down the panels, we, we follow the smoke trail. We've got a duck running across here, Dominic. It's, it's, uh, it's come through. The and once fires get into ductings, it can spread very, very quickly. A fire develops in such a way that once it's burning, it will generate enough heat to rise up the ceiling and form a heat layer. You can see the area around here. Yeah. That heat layer will reach a temperature of anywhere up to about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Can we get this panel down? Guys, guys. Need the drill over here. Need guys, drill over here. Guys. Gentlemen, drill over here. <laughs> That heat layer of combustible gases will explode because once you introduce oxygen into that compartment, it goes straight for that. That flashes, which ignites all these combustible gases up here. There's a lot of heat. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. The extinguishers we used were not adequate. Then, go all the way. Yeah. Another one, Dennis. Yeah. Still warm. Yep, yeah, still warm. Keep going. There was too much obstruction for it to be really effective, although it was cooling down to a certain extent. So that's why we put a hose up there. Slowly, slowly charge it up, okay? And everybody stand clear, because this is powerful. Hello? Slowly, slowly! Come on, come in! Come in, come in, come in! Yeah, here it comes. There. You can find the source of heat in inaccessible areas once uh, water's been sprayed on it because the water warms up. So once we could feel that there was no heat in the situation, uh, we know we've got things under control. This is the captain's message to all shipboard personnel: stand down, stand up. All mobile groups will stand down, stand down, stand down. So this, so this was the original color, actually. Details defines a kind of okay job or a really good job. Something is wrong. 
No, I just still have a wrinkle here. Probably the problem is here. And the, this is a problem. See, this back is all flat, and this back has a seam in the middle. We don't want this at all. And you see that a lot of times I return things, I don't accept things, because it's not built to our expectations and to what it was contracted with the contractor. I know every single item that we reject is a step back, that those are items that even under the pressure that we have today, we cannot accept. <laughs> The, um, the Crown and Anchor is part of our brand identity and um, whenever you see that you instantly know it's, it's Royal Caribbean. The Crown and Anchor logo used to be lit up by uh, neon, but it was not working, it has not been working for five years. So the only way you're going to change out the lights is taking down the Crown and Anchor. It takes a while because it's been up there since the ship came in service, so they have to break the paint off, break the seal on them, and be very careful and rig it up properly so it does not have any accidents to come down. Uh, we've still got a, a problem trying to separate it from the ship. It doesn't want to go. Uh, can you give me an estimate when we're going to be able to use the crane for garbage, please? Sophia, I can't put a time on it at all. We've got a problem up here with this crown and anchor. You got all that glass there, they don't want it coming back into it to do any damage. Yes, I have a lot of stuff to move, and you see I have another crane to do it with, but I can't use that crane right now because I have my two beams hitting each other. By doing that job, I'm locked out on another job. Yes! Bird is flying. This is when it pays to have lots of ad bills. My working relationship with George is great. Yeah, we go head to head at times. Yeah, you know, he's got his job to do. I've got mine. Sometimes it does get out of hand and we'll have a hissy fit with each other. But at the end of the day, we can sit down, kick back, have a couple of beers with each other and just laugh it off. Project team and safety officers are responding to their second emergency fire call of the day. During a dry dock, there is one big scare that everybody is extremely aware of is fire. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Everybody panics. Doesn't matter who you are, how much experience you are, you're always going to have a split second of panic. When I arrive there, I've already formed in my mind what is going on, and that comes from years of experience. We're always prepared for the worst scenario. Captain, Captain, uh, for you, there is some heat in the deck on deck 11. We have hundreds of hot works, uh, meaning that we are grinding, cutting, welding new steels, and if that creates heat, and that is not a normal conditions on board any ship. I'm gonna cool the area down, I'm gonna put a hose on it, and I'm just gonna be safe. That's why you see me get a hose and spray it all down. OK, it's salt water. It, it makes rust. But what do you want? Do you want a ship that's going to sail again and it's going to make a lot of money, or do you want a, a burnt-out hulk? My job is to keep this, um, this company safe, and I do that by keeping this ship safe. This is the captain's message to all the shipboard personnel. Stand down, stand down. Thank you. Do not resume your hot work until fire watchers are in place. We can't do any of the jobs that we needed to get done today. The aft area is shut down, the balconies are shut down. So now I gotta have people working all night to catch up. Working on a ship is different than working anywhere else because on this ship, especially when it's in service, there is, a, a, there is another god, you know? There are people on this ship who actually can say no. And so even though you have a perfect plan and you've gotten authorization and you're cooking at any moment. There might be divine intervention, and everything comes to a crashing halt. And of course, we were in that 
Twilight Zone of not having materials and tools. Okay, here's the problem. We've got instructions to do the it's print uh, here. Right. He shipped 358. Everybody is sensing that we're going to be short, right? Yeah. Well, wow, that's how many we were told because we had, I don't know, we got this information from the ship and asked how much they were going to need. I mean, it, should be, it should be enough if, we, if they had 60 yards per roll. Okay, 358 yards was ordered. We may have a problem. Can you rethink your spec? <clears throat> well, I, I don't understand what you mean by rethink my spec. Okay, I mean, what we've do you got need more of? Because we can check on trying to get more of something if that's the case, but I need the, to know what it is. The consensus for Maurice and Ver is that we are going to be a roll short of this fabric. That's a tough one to get. It's going to be probably an there. issue. My name is Edwina. I am the bingo mom on board. I'm the assistant cruise director. Right now, you're in the middle of the central, so there's a lot of construction. And this seems to be the local drop-off point for everything. There's construction everywhere. There's lots of supplies everywhere, and I don't mean hammers and nails. I mean plaster, sanding guns, nail guns. And you're smelling the sanding and the grinding and you're hearing the noise, and it's very intense. This does not look like the old Sovereign of the Seas, which I guess is the point. This looks like a severe construction site. Right now, Brad is installing three spotlights that are going to lead the clock after we make it work. So now we really have to make it work. You remember the last time these have worked? When they designed it, it worked for seven days. After that, they have brought like probably 15 people to fix it. This little project is taking a lot of time on top of the billion things that we have to do every day. I really need, need it to work soon. The only thing that's doing is going up. Yeah, and, and that, that's, all, that's all. Going up and coming down. Yeah. So why do we need to put a motor on it? Every time it turns, it pushes this one up. Yeah. Every turn. What we want to do is to put a solenoid that yeah. pushes out. The balcony team has a, has, a, has a valve that pushes out to, to close the AC loop. That's Maybe they have some spares. That's it. Yeah. Should we go ask if they have one here? Yeah, that's it. We'll get it. That's it. Let's go. David, a solenoid valve. We, we figured out how to fix the clock. So we want to see what the ship has. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah really. <laughs> so we do have this dream of being able to get the clock working and fixed. I think the thing will be is if we can watch the clock and see if we can get the clock working, maybe we can get the rest of the project working. We need a solenoid valve, an electric solenoid valve. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What is this? No. It's a little bit. Will it be up? Yeah, but the whole system is theft. Yeah, I know. We need a lever. It's, it's just taking a lot of time, and, and we are running out of time. Do we have any kind of little electric switch that has a little lever? A solenoid, basically. Solenoid, yeah. yeah. Yeah, an electric yeah. solenoid. Yeah. Yeah, but then uh, we can go down in the store. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. We can go this way. We believe there is a way to fix it. I can draw for you what we need. Yeah. That I can make a drawing. You make a drawing. Okay. Okay. But uh, when you release the power, this piece comes in again. Okay. Basically, that's the principle. I don't know if they have a square. It doesn't matter the shape. It's just the principle. Yeah. OK. I will see what I can do. But it will not be done now. It will maybe yeah. take the evening or tomorrow. OK. Yeah. So pretty much the condition is, if by the end of the dry dock, that thing doesn't give the time, <laughs> it's going out. And if it goes out, now we're in trouble. But what are we going to put there instead of it? It has to work. It really has to work. Along with completely making over the inside of the Sovereign, the dry dock is also a time for Royal Caribbean to do a mechanical overhaul of the outside of the ship. My name's David Rice. I'm the uh, ship superintendent for Sovereign of the Seas. My sort of biggest thing is all the dry dock bottom work. We've got quite involved uh, work going on down the dock bottom. Uh, we're taking all the paint off the hull. We're stripping all the old paint down the steel. What the machine does is it sticks itself to the bottom of the ship and it maneuvers itself around the bottom and it takes the paint all the way to the steel 
so that when we repaint it, it'll stick to the ship. But you can see how time-saving it is compared to having a bunch of people go around with pressure washers and sandblasters doing this, where it just does it itself. You don't have all the sand or the debris on the dock bottom that has to be cleaned up. Pretty much anything, anything we can do down there, we are going to do. It's, uh, it's huge. Uh, we need to rebuild the starboard propeller hub. We have to take the blades off to, to rebuild the hub. Uh, I mean, the, this ship's been in service for, for quite a number of years now, and at the end of the day, everything wears out. And this propeller hub has, has worn out, the clearances are excessive, so we need to rebuild it. To get the propeller shaft out, we have to remove the uh, rudders. They weigh about 18 tons apiece. In the mechanical shop, we will, uh, we will crack test the tips of the blades. Uh, we'll test the roots to make sure there's no cracking. And we'll also test the palm bolts, which are the bolts that bolt the blade onto the hull. Again, to make sure they're not elongated, they're stretched. My schedule in dry dog is tight. It's always tight towards the end. There's a lot of... Uh, stressful situations things don't seem to be happening as quick as people want them to but it's always the case and it, it will it will never change the areas that are worrying me the most is the balcony area see if they're getting all the cutouts done we want to get all the hot work done there because it is a high risk area there's a lot of burning along the whole side of the ship uh, they've been burning into the cabins and the materials also falling down on the promenade deck which means we have to close off that area, which constricts material flow. The deck 10 cabins are our nicest cabins, what we call our suites cabins. And this ship was the oldest ship in our company right now, and it didn't have balconies when it was built. Most new ships are built with 60% uh, balconies, and this one has zero. So now we're going back and adding balconies to these suite cabins, you know, to make them nicer cabins. I'm inspecting the balcony work now to actually see the detail how much they actually have done. Because they gave us a percent complete, but the executives want a more detailed report. So I had to make a report to actually cross off the tasks to see where they're at. So I need a monitor to make sure they are doing that and getting in some progress. I just haven't seen it there yet. I'm hoping that I don't drop the ball on anything, but if one of the areas where I've really been working on and involved in, like balcony work and others, if those were to really fail or not work out or something happens, then I'd be a lot really disappointed in myself because I haven't been able to follow up on it enough. I have to be willing to ask stupid questions and ask things and, and admit my ignorance. At the end of the day, if, if I don't ask them, and I could have asked them, and it does fail if something goes wrong, then that's just poor management and poor, a poor job on my part. Today's been uh, a hit and miss kind of day. We had some steps forward and we had some steps backward. Uh, some of the equipment that we was fitted in Windjammer had to come out because it was too high, so we had to adjust the basis. So that's knocked us back a couple of hours today in that area. But we have so much work going on in so many areas, it's it, it's always inevitable. Oh, this is a message to the quick response team. Go to deck 10 of Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. Environmental responding. He points the hose, he's got to move it! Get along the pussy boys, get along the hose as wide as you can, move him up! Step one off there, on there, quick! Get, break it from there, break it from there, break it from there! Take it off, just take it off! Take it off the hose! Well, we've had a fairly traumatic time because of the pressure of work and People are not paying attention to what is going on, particularly when it comes to hot work and protecting our ship. And what you've got to understand is that this is still a live ship. I have been in several, quite a few dry docks, but nothing, something like this. And we can't allow this. I don't want to allow this anymore. We have three bravos in a few days' time, and we have three weeks to go. 
under no circumstances we're going to allow time pressure and fatigue and things like that jeopardize the safety of the ship, and not to mention the project and finally human life on board. So go back to your people and address this again and again because there will be a reaction to the action soon. People will have to leave the ship. If you don't have competent people, remove them immediately. Contractors have to make sure their work processes and their work orders are in compliance with our safety regulations. If they cannot do that, and if they cannot comply with what we want, then we don't want them on board the ship. They are a danger to the ship. Not only a danger to the ship, they're a danger to the life of our crew on board. If they don't comply with our regulations, then goodbye. We have got to have a safe ship, and we will have a safe ship. the next episode of Dry Dock, a cruise ship reborn. Dry Dock fever sweeps through the Sovereign. Start to see this kind of like glazed look come over people's faces. Symptoms include fatigue, irritability. Guys, don't keep bringing this carpet in here. <laughs> even injury, and a powerful windstorm threatens to put the project further behind. Shut the crane down, it's too windy. At the rate it's going now, we're not going to finish. A typhoon moves through the Philippines, leaving Suzanne's riding crew wondering if their family...